In this morning's Health Watch, coffee and uterine cancer, it's the most common cancer affecting women's reproductive organs. About 42,000 new cases were diagnosed last year and more than 7,000 women died. Now some good news. A new Mayo Clinic study says coffee can actually reduce your risk. Our Dr. Jennifer Ashton has the details on this. Good morning. Good morning, Betty. You know, I'm not really a coffee drinker, but I may start drinking it now. How much of this do you have to drink to reduce your risk? The study looked at over 20,000 women after menopause found that those who consumed two and a half cups of coffee mm. per day had a significantly lower risk of uterine cancer. So put another notch in the column of coffee's benefits. Well, what is it specifically about coffee? They're, they're not sure, and obviously a lot more research needs to be done. Interestingly, this study did not find the same protective effect with other forms of caffeine, unfortunately, mm -hmm. like chocolate or tea, but it ha might have to do with in insulin levels or estrogen levels. It's really not clear, but again, mounting evidence that the benefits of caffeine outweigh the risks. Well, who is most at risk when it comes to uterine cancer? Well, generally we say women who have high estrogen exposure, so those who might have a late menopause, who are obese because we know excess body fat is another source of estrogen production, some women with infertility problems, but again, and, and certainly women who have a, a rare but a uh, hereditary form of a colon cancer. If you're not sure whether you're at high risk, absolutely you want to ask your gynecologist. And uterine cancer is treatable. So what are the symptoms when someone may be worried that perhaps they could have it? The really the biggest one, Betty, is abnormal bleeding. Over the age of 35, if you're having abnormal bleeding or an increase in discharge, a change in urinary habits or pelvic pain or cramping, absolutely you want to talk to your doctor. Mm -hmm. And screening tests are out there, they are available. Endometrial biopsy is really, it's a simple office procedure that's usually, that's the best screening test, but it's not widespread, so it's really based on symptoms and risk factors. All right, so two and a half cups a day, I need to start drinking That's up. right, I need my half and a half of that <laughs> coffee. <laughs> that's true, we need to pump that up a little bit. Um, but besides drinking coffee, are there other things that you can do as well? So the important things to reduce your risk, other than the obvious ones like watching your diet and exercise, actually birth control pills, can lower your risk of uterine cancer, and that risk protection is seen up to 10 years after discontinuing birth control pills. Again, you want to balance the risks versus benefits of oral contraceptives, but that's a really good way. Breastfeeding can lower the risk in the same way that pregnancy does, because again, it drops your estrogen levels. And again, diet and exercise, very important. You want to keep your overall body weight down, because estrogen and body fat are linked. Always key, and you want to add two and a half cups of this to that diet. Not more because we know that too much caffeine can have its own benefits, True. but I need my half and half in my coffee. Drink up, right? <laughs> exactly. Dr. Jennifer Ashton, thank you. A lot happens early on The Early Show, weekday mornings on CBS.